All right, welcome everybody to the Ethereal Podcast, episode three. I'm Ian. I'm Alex. Thank you for joining us for another Ethereal experience. So, uh, Alex, uh, before we get started, do you want to just run down uh, what we're going to touch today for uh, our topic? For sure. Uh, I just like to point out uh, this is a mustache edition today. <laughs> yeah, I noticed. Uh, so, look- let me tell you. This week, we have kind of a a heavy subject, um, and it deals with uh, diamonds and the idea of scarcity in economics. And uh, this past week, we had homework that included the movie Blood Diamond. Uh, The readings covered a short story called The Necklace, and uh, then we also had a Kanye West song. And um, today, we're going to spend the majority of the time going over the homework, and then we also are going to have some commercial breaks in between. And then we're going to leave y'all with a small little, you know, uh, financial slash economic lesson, uh, just something to, to, to help you out and to, to be informed about. And then we're going to close it and we're going to assign the homework for next week. Awesome. Cool. So uh, I guess, yeah, just to start out, um, let's jump right into the, the topic today. Um, it's, you know, it's a, it's a topic that I really hadn't, I've certainly heard about. I think whoa, most whoa, of whoa. it. Oh, whoa. Okay. What's up? You didn't, you didn't tell us the quote of the week, Ian. Oh, oh, oh no. I'm so sorry. I, oh, I feel like I already messed up. <laughs> no, uh, no, 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 you're good. You're good. We, we, we were just, we we're trying to catch the audience, see if oh, they were paying attention. Yeah, yeah, it was for you guys. It wasn't for me. Like, <laughs> it's just a psychological test. So, um, to relate back to the topic, uh, the quote of the week is Many individuals have, like uncut diamonds, shining qualities beneath a rough exterior. That's good. You know, I, I, I read that quote earlier, but I, I forgot, uh, forgot that last part. That's good. That's a good one. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, uh, yeah, to go back to or to rather continue back into uh, the, the topic of diamonds. Um, you know, the whole industry of the blood diamond industry, like I, I guess I didn't really, I've certainly heard about it, but I don't think it really dawned on me just how prevalent even today it is. Cause we're going to touch on the, the song, you know, diamonds from Sierra Leone by Kanye, mm-hmm. but that song came that song came out a long time ago. And that was just, that was my dog that just took out my, <laughs> just took out my left <laughs> ear pod, my bad. Um, <laughs> anyway, on back to us, back to this. Um, so the song Diamonds from Sierra Leone, Alex, do you want to, do you want to touch on like uh, exactly what Kanye was uh, talking about in that song? Sure. And um, I, I don't know if you watched the music video. I, I actually did. And uh, funny enough, only Kanye would do this, but the music video starts out with a quote by Kanye himself. Absolutely. So um, <laughs> it talks about like, no one really knows or understands the nature of the diamonds and where they come from because these diamonds, um, in essence, have seen so much negative and uh, abusive actions just to find them. But the holder of the diamond never really knows or, or sees the history that's uh, kind of been invested into this diamond because you have it, you know, in the rough and the ground all the way to uh, being cut and um, placed in a setting for a ring. And so uh, this song really kind of exposed the, the diamond industry uh, in kind of a modern sense because as you know, kings and queens and you know princes princesses all the all the royalty uh they always um adore diamonds and jewels and gemstones and uh and that we we don't really think about it uh as a negative thing we just know that like this type of uh, luxury exists Mm -hmm. but um and and it's usually reserved for the the upper echelons like you know you see rappers like uh having these crazy chains um and and some of them have so many jewels you know it almost looks like uh like fruit on it like you know it's like crazy how much color some of the the jewels have but uh you know no one ever thinks uh, about what had to happen for for these things to come together and uh, i feel like the song um 
painted the picture very well and kind of exposed the the modern diamond industry in a in a way that we don't really think of because it's such a, a ingrained aspect of royalty right. from you know the medieval times like even even back in the day like uh, uh Greeks and Romans I believe like they were they were aware of like these these precious crystals and um, oh, yeah. they even like we're embedding them into jewelry and and I believe like it's it's been such a a close history between humans and uh jewels as a a sign of wealth and luxury yeah. that and, and money too I mean like with, yes. with gold and silver I mean that's been around since probably before written history so For yeah sure um, and you that, know, that's my take on the song. No. Yeah. And well, along with the, uh, like, yeah, talking about obviously the, the, you know, the blood diamond industry, um, I, you know, Kanye being Kanye, he, he, he wanted to throw in his own, you know, spin on his life too. Cause he was trying to relate how, you know, when he, it, he, he was, when uh, I think one of the main verses was throw your diamonds in the sky. Yep. And the whole, I think the whole idea behind that was, Hey, look, here's, my, my, you know, not everything is as glitzy and glamorous as, you know, the, the good life, uh, seems to be, uh, and it, to me, it seemed like he was, he was just wrestling. I mean, you could argue he always does, but he's wrestling with personal demons, uh, in the music industry, you know, at the time when he was writing his music and dealing with personal problems, uh, a lot of, I think a lot of it, he was dealing with women, uh, like mm -hmm. some serious issues with, how he treated women or how he treated himself. And uh, so he was, it almost felt like the song was like trying to balance a serious topic and actual real world topic with, and trying to relate it back to him, which you could argue is a little narcissistic, but to me it was, it was a really clever way of spinning and promoting both issues and how, um, you know, and obviously the song sounded awesome. <laughs> like it was well-produced. Oh, of course. Yeah. But uh, sonically it, it hit. It, it it did hit. <laughs> uh, and keep in mind that song's quite old when you when you really yeah. think about it. Wasn't that hit one of his first like main albums? That was his I first album. So. Yeah. Um and, and the sample on it, man, they surgically cut that sample. It was so good. Uh oh yeah, no, a hundred percent. Um I'm trying to think uh, now that bo that's bothering me. I'm trying to remember which album that was. I think it was like uh, the one in like the early two thousands, uh the late um, registration. Yeah, yeah, it was late registration, I believe. Um, but uh, yeah, and, and I guess going back to what I, I was mentioning earlier, like for the fact that that, that industry is still so uh, corrupt and alive and well today is uh, a little depressing. Um, but yeah, <laughs> which, uh, you know, um, with that, before we, I think, uh, correct me if you want to move to this to the movie first but i think uh touching on like on the consumer side of things what um mm. the whole concept of specifically diamonds means to people in the first world um it's 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 an unfortunate side of uh, unfortunate side effect i think of to, uh, of excess uh and how easily you know material things become uh the most desirable aspect of our lives even over other people um and uh you i think and for, for the record alex picked out this this short story and also for the record i unfortunately don't know how to pronounce this guy's last name it's a good story uh, i i'm do you want me to try uh, go for it man you're you're in france okay, uh, so i <laughs> uh guy do mon poisson oh i i believe you you know like i was gonna i was gonna throw in like two extra syllables and they're like Mal Passant or something like that. So <laughs> Passant. Passant. Um, but uh anyway, uh yeah, let's uh let's dive into that short story because um I I really I really enjoyed it. Um it's an old one, you know, it's it's several hundred, it's a couple hundred years old, I believe, but uh it's it, it's a it's a very concise way of I think explaining where we're at even now, at least in, in America. I don't know about over in Europe, but um so anyway uh do you do you want to do you want to touch it first sure I, i'm gonna say that uh I, it's got that classic spin at the ends um, oh yeah yeah and, 
but what I found most interesting is that for this woman, mm -hmm. um, she she would constantly look back at this um, this like almost Met Gala. You know, she would constantly look back like, oh, how beautiful and luxurious and and how um, they they use the word triumphant she felt because of her diamond necklace and her dress. Mm -hmm. And I always thought that was interesting because she she had to she had to pay her dues for over 10 years. Um, and throughout that whole time, it kept on mentioning how she just would would dream back to that that one day. And it was. It was interesting because it, it 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 contrasted like you know the time that you have to wait for mm -hmm. something to happen that is either good or um, just an experience in itself. And you know w when you think about it, like I I'm not a very patient person, and whenever I read this, I was, it it kind of had like a a weird feeling where I was like man, I wait in line for like 20 minutes at a, a roller coaster ride. And, and, and the roller coaster is like usually less than three or four minutes. Mm. It's like, it's like the, <laughs> it's a good analogy. Like the, yeah. Yeah. It's and, and you know, there's no way that she could have known if she would have lost the, the necklace or not, but she, she, she definitely thinks about like how fickle life is that, uh what that that this happened and my life had to change a complete direction and and i really thought that she never mentioned that she regretted it because she always looked back on a day but i think mm -hmm. deep inside she she realized like the potential she had if it was not all about pleasing society and other people and right. trying to be the most appealing yeah i mean because uh, I guess backing up a little bit, um, she, uh, the, 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 the woman, the main character in the story, uh, Matilda, I believe, um, she, you know, tried so hard to pay back this massive debt because she lost, like you said, the, the, the diamond necklace. She, I think it took her, what, a decade to... to... Yes, 10 years and they had to pay like, ex they had to pay compounding uh like debt and they also had to like pay a, a so so many people they borrowed from so many people to to get it yeah. another diamond necklace to replace it and and after all was said and done uh, if you read the story uh after all was said and done <laughs> the necklace that she stole was practically worthless it was fake it was like rhinestones mm -hmm. uh which I think broke completely shattered her illusion of what, you know, being wealthy meant uh, to these people. Especially since she got it from someone that she looked up to and kind of resented because she wanted to be in that lifestyle. Right. And uh, I mean, the, yeah, the aristocracy, uh, they don't care. I, I mean, they, it made it very clear in the story. Like they don't, they don't really care if you're able to flash the most, they just care about the status more than anything. Um, mm -hmm. Which, is a good and bad thing depending on where you're at in the totem pole, I guess. But uh, I don't think that was the point of the, the story. The point of the story was, you know, you're, you're trying to accumulate all of these material goods to try to please other people, but it doesn't, it doesn't matter in the end. Like if that's all you're going for in life, like all you care about is what you have and not who you're with. So that's a, uh, it's going to leave you empty constantly because there's, there's always going to be something more, Mm -hmm. that you can have and um something uh, that that relates to diamonds and jewels and stuff that my grandma always tells me uh she, she's got some wise words but what she says is uh and i quote all of that glitter isn't gold which is to say like what you see mm. <laughs> is can can be like crippling actually even though it looks like super it, even though it looks super exciting and right a, a worthwhile adventure into some type of unknown world of luxury and, and, and fanciful lime life. It's not worth it. No, absolutely. And it's hard, I think to, I mean, it's, it, those are definitely words to live by, but it's, it's hard I, to, to, to accept that as uh, mm -hmm. a better reality when you're, well, I think when you live in the West uh, at, at least in the West, you know, where things are relatively developed 
and you have more than enough as far as like material things and uh you know cars clothes houses you name it right so it's hard to dial it down and actually realize what's important um uh, i certainly need to work on that um for sure but um and i think well i think at this point we should turn more towards the actual ser uh, so we, we we touched on the consumer problem right but mm. the producer issue is what is just the most troubling out of all of this especially specifically Absolutely. yeah specifically related to diamonds um mm. and i and I, I don't i don't think so we, we you know we watched the movie blood diamond but before i jump into that i i don't think i realized just how many well first of all how how prevalent it still is like i mentioned earlier but how many fake diamonds are or at least uh unpure diamonds are in production like just in the in the in the normal world like in in uh, construction and i didn't realize just how many diamonds there were i guess is my point <laughs> uh, like if they're not extremely rare they're just um sought after for their for the purest cleanest looking one which um it just kind of blew my mind because you know when you when you see the commercials when you see the market you, you picture diamonds as being this extremely rare um un, almost unattainable jewel that mm -hmm. yeah I, I don't know it, it just it kind of struck me as almost um <laughs> i felt i felt betrayed <laughs> but like it was it, i don't know it, it's very interesting um but anyway um, that's a good point because like especially in dallas you can go to just about any mall even even outlet malls which are supposed to be um more towards the lower end consumer um yeah. but but they they have an absorbent amount of jewelry and i mean not all of it is diamonds but the majority of it is diamonds and it's you know that's a good point because you know, we see it on, on people's hands and on jewelry for special events, but we never realize like just how much of a market it is. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, and, and I, 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 there's so like, again, diamonds are not nearly as scarce as they're made out to be because they're, they're mm -hmm. everywhere in terms of uh, construction. Like they're used in saws, they're used in um, cutting up uh, metals. Um, a lot of drilling too. A, a lot, lot of, of diamond tipped. Yeah, so they're not they're not that it's not like gold or platinum. They're not it's not that rare. Um which made it I think even more sad when, when I watched that movie. I'm like, man, this is really it, huh? This is this is really uh, this is really the only outlet these people have and it's not even that rare. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, and, you know, since, since we're already kind of uh, beating around the bush, uh, let's go ahead and um, get into the producer side. Uh, so we're going to talk about Blood Diamond, the movie, and I'm going to go and hit with uh, the most depressing subject. I'm going to talk about uh, the child slavery and, you know, kind of the, the militant style and tribalism involved yeah. in Africa. And, you know, the thing that got me, what in in this movie that like really um made me sympathetic uh and and really kind of changed my 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 world view on children is uh like in third world countries is uh the quote from the the teacher that was kind of um running an orphanage and uh trying to to re re-educate these kids and reorient them into a, a better society he said why do you think they call it the infantry? It's an army made of infants. And I was, that, oh, that got me. I was oh, like, man. man. <laughs> uh, I'm not, I'm not laughing. Uh, Cause it's funny. I'm laughing. I'm, I'm laughing out of it being uncomfortable, uncomfortable, uncomfortably true. Um, mm -hmm. Oh Lord. Yeah. I mean, I guess, yeah. If we're starting out with that, I mean, in the movie, you know, the, one of the main character's sons, you know, is, is kidnapped. Right, and he's taken by uh, the rebel army um, that is, you know, a part of the uh, blood diamond cultivation, I guess, if you want to call it that. Mm. And uh, yeah, he doesn't even remember his dad. He, he was brainwashed. Which, uh, you know, th at first I was like, oh, that's unrealistic. There, you know, there uh, the kids can't be brainwashed that quickly. And I'm like, you know, I was thinking back to when I was a kid. I'm like, 
I kind of looked up to whoever was my role model at the time. And I just kind of followed their lead. Like, I think I was thinking in terms of an adult who's more aware yeah. of the world around them, hopefully. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, with kids, they, they, they just follow, they, they follow who is their authority figure. And so um, it, it kind of made sense to me how easily they could be recruited. So, um, and you got to keep in mind, you believed in Santa, you believed in the Easter bunny. Like, that's true. Like, yeah, just stuff like, like that. The crazy thing is, is, is that the kids being naive is almost a superpower because, you know, you look at, like, I don't know if you've ever been skiing, but there is this uh, stereotype where adults are scared to do the triple black diamonds, but you'll see kids running through it. And, and, yeah. Th- this this naive aspect of children actually makes them fearless in a way and i mean that can work good or bad but it's crazy because like kids learn typically learn faster um than adults in certain subjects and it can in the sad part is that can be used for a war like like kids mm-hmm. could learn faster even for war and i I truly think that, like, I don't know if it is classified as psychological warfare, but using children as your your army certainly feels like psychological warfare because oh, one hundred percent the amount. Yeah, it's yeah. Weird. Well, yeah, because I mean, uh, if you are, if you're, a, <laughs> hopefully, if you're a decent person, you don't want to kill kids. Uh, that that that's a. Mm-hmm. That's, that's that's not an obvious that's not an obvious thing you really have to think about that one should be uh, a universal <laughs> like basic truth you know yeah yeah but uh <laughs> i mean yeah it's a twofold thing because kids are naive innately and they're easily influenced mm-hmm. by their surroundings and two yeah as an adult you don't you you'd rather not mow down a bunch of kids who are trying to uh uh kill you right that's that's just you know, it's, it's, it's almost unspoken how obvious that is. Right. So the, 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 the yeah. leaders, um, of those rebel groups were, are, I don't know how, I don't know what, honestly, what, um, state it's in now as far as the, those problems, but I'm sure it's still prevalent, but at least, mm-hmm. at least in the context of the movie, um, they, they knew exactly what they were doing. The captain poison, I believe was his name. Um, yep. he knew exactly what he was doing. He, uh, it was it's just heartbreaking uh to to wit especially well especially because the the main character's kid was what he was blindfolded i believe when they were training him and you had all yeah, at first all the kids were kind of scared uh, as you might imagine but mm-hmm. as the captain poison was riling, riling them all up uh they you know they were starting to get uh into it and they were starting to yell and scream and get the main character's son to uh to shoot just some random guy and he did um and basically it, make make the kid do a like a firing squad yeah no, that's what it was just some innocent random Person. civilian that they had captured yep uh yeah it just again it's it you you don't want to believe that it's that easy but they're kids i mean i don't know what else to say like it, it makes it makes sense unfortunately so um, and the way the the movie presented it, I thought was really smart because it shows like the the evil intelligence that some of these groups have, where they kind of build up these kids, and and they go from you know having the kids being scared and feel for, fearful to having them being um un having an unwarranted amount of bravery and disgust for anything but their tribe, and yep. it. Th- those kids were introduced to so so many negative aspects of society at an unprecedented level for example like they were introduced to guns and warfare but also they were introduced to to drugs and um abuse right. and, and, and yeah. there's uh there's a saying i don't know if you know this but uh it, it's it's unfortunate um but the saying is if you treat someone like mud they'll stick like mud Oh, and, oh man! Yeah, and I and so I feel like yeah. with these kids, um, they they found a way to weaponize the kids, and they certainly were were relying on that. Right, and, and you know the the greatest shame of all this is like Africa in general. I know I, I know Africa is not a continent. I'm not that stupid, <laughs> but Africa as a as a whole, 
I guess I should say, um, is, you know, so incredibly blessed with natural resources, but just due to constant, you know, I mean, hundreds of years of in, uh, invasions and conflicts uh, within and out from the outside, um, you know, all these natural resources that could easily come, go to benefit uh, the people that live there, like oil, uh, was it coal, uranium, of course, gems and jewels, mm -hmm. and then uh, natural gas, uh, just petroleum, and then, um, you know, wood and timber. Um, all Anything these, you could think of virtually, like, it, yeah. that Africa is the, the most resource um, dense. And uh, it, it's, yeah. it's unfortunate because Africa, even the countries within them, like, um, they... they they utilize the country's borders in such a negative way. And the movie is presented as there, there's a smuggler that brings it across a border in uh, right. an unnatural yeah. form. Um, for example, uh, I, in the movie, uh, they had it inside a goat's neck. The diamonds were, were, were hidden inside the goat's neck, like yeah. actually embedded below the skin. But um, from what I've heard uh, in like, in, in Today's time, there is one country that, you know, kind of mines the diamonds in, uh, in, in a very illegal way. And then they transport the diamonds to another country uh, to across a border to, to smuggle them. And then there's a third country that actually certifies them and cleans the books and then sells them. So that's kind of like the situation oh. nowadays. But I didn't know. So, OK, I, I actually didn't know that. I You know, in the movie, I know they went to uh, what was it, Liberia, I believe, to... Mm -hmm. transport uh the the blood diamonds but i didn't realize the third that third part where they essentially did uh they scrubbed <laughs> they, they washed the blood off their hands really yeah, i didn't realize that yep okay wow um but but it's crazy i mean africa it, it's basically a paradox because like uh as you mentioned the resources but just think about like where we came from like mesopotamia like the fertile crescent or mm -hmm. fertile crescent um, like that's in Africa and like, th uh, like this is literally where humanity like came from. And so, sorry, I don't, I don't mean to cut you off, but, uh, I th just, just for the record, I think Mesopotamia was in the middle East, but are you talking about the Nile? Yeah. Okay. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Just make it. I sure. might be wrong on that, but, but, but we, we you know, we've, uh, we spent a, a long time in, in Africa yes. or at least near there with the middle East and, you know, it's it's still kind of the one of the least developed uh, continents. For yeah, especially you know, unfortunately, and especially in Central Africa, there's there's so there's so much unrest even today. Um, you know, you, you hear about countries' names being changed over every few years, um, and the economy. You know, they're they're ravaged. They're sorry ravaged by uh, poverty, uh, disease, you know, of course we, mm -hmm. we know the main ones, uh, malaria and HIV. Um, uh, and, 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 and the, the problem is for a lot of these countries, uh, you, you have cor corporations already there. So you're like, oh, just bring in some companies and fi they'll fix the problems. But the, 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 the problem mm -hmm. is, yeah, no, the pr exactly. The problem is these, these oil and uh, mining companies, they don't, they're they're not there for the country. They're not there for the people in it. <laughs> they're there for the resources, and the pro and mm. that problem aside, they 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 uh, strike deals with either a militia or a government in these different regions. Um, and so the you know the, the people are kind of left out of the equation. It seems like, and I know that's a broad generalization. And I realize, of course, there are countries like Morocco, Algeria, uh, Egypt, South uh, South Africa who are kind of exceptions to that rule. Um, but it, you know, it seems like wherever a country has a huge amount of resources in Africa there, it's grossly exploited. Um, and it's, I, I know it's a complicated history, but it's just, it's such a shame because you would think that these countries would be just brimming with wealth. And I'm not talking about just at the top. I'm talking about kind of across the board. Um, yep. It just, it's just, it's just awful that, you know, when you, when you look at the disparity, um, so yeah. Yeah. Rough. And, uh, you know, 
one more point on you know this Africa paradox. Like I I I've known about India having a lot of people, but like Africa as a continent has the most amount of people, and that surprised me because it like. I would think with uh, the amount of people, like they would need to have things organized and civilized and working. But yeah, well, again, it's 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 just it's not too, working because they're exploited. Uh, yeah, and they're well and divided too. I mean, keep in mind, Africa. I mean, as a as as a whole, again, I know they have hundreds of countries or almost a hundred countries, I think. Anyway, um, but they have hundreds of if not thousands of subcultures who don't get along, <laughs> uh, in, in many yep. areas, uh, the, I think the most famous one is the, the Hulus and the Tootsies, Tootsies, um, who had, the two yeah, the Tootsie, <laughs> the Hulus and the Tootsie <laughs> roll, the, the video streaming company versus the candy company. Um, but, uh, they, you know, it was, a, it was, uh, an ethnic war, where they they were at each other's throats for years and years um and that's again that's one of the more famous examples but my point is um there's there's no such thing as it seems like as one africa there's because there's so many there's so much diversity um culturally and uh uh, ethnically that they they're just it's it's an internal struggle constantly um, over there and, and with that you uh you talked about in the first episode uh getting to know you you you've been interested in geography and a, a geographical perspective i think like with africa it's also incredibly difficult to be united uh just due to you know the sahara desert and um all these type of mountainous as well as like densely packed forests it's just hard to have uh, infrastructure there, I believe. But w- would you? Well, that's fair. Would you say so, or um, that that is fair? Um, and not only that, um, it, I think it could be accomplished maybe uh, around the Sahara, but the, 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 there's just there's not enough in, there's not enough money there's not enough money mm-hmm. at, at the current time. I think in a lot of these countries to fund such massive projects unless they get outside help, which uh, I think right now China is is doing a huge amount of investing in central and Southern Africa with uh, the mining. And, and you know how they're controlling that investment is they're actually uh, buying up a lot of the banks is what I've heard. Uh, like the, the, the government banks. Uh, both the government uh, and private sector banks and really Africa. So they're essentially buying Africa, African countries is what, they need Gee. some resources because they, they got plans and, and they got lots Man. of the electronics. So it's got to be sourced from somewhere. And it, there's, Jeez. Th- that's the future is really the, the semiconductor and silicon industry. So they're, they're trying to secure their base of operations when it comes to the digital and electronics of the future. And, and, from, and, and again, I know this doesn't apply to every African country. I, I keep wanting to reiterate that because I don't want to. <laughs> yes. It's a good point. Cause we keep talking but... at such a continent scale and, and, you know, it, it, it's hard to to learn about all the cultures and the different ethnicities and lineages and uh, sure. struggles within each African country. Because I, mean, I mean, I I told you like sometimes I forget that like like Oregon or or, or like <laughs> North Dakota is a state. Like, <laughs> ouch. Yeah. To be I mean to be fair, like it it, it is. Wait, Oregon though? Oh come on, not Oregon. Yeah, they've got Portland, the greatest city on the planet. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm joking. Let me I... tell you about Portland. Uh-oh. Don't even get me started. But <laughs> no, nah, I'm just kidding. But uh but you know to since we're we're already talking, you know, a, a lot about Africa and kind of the exploitation, let's get into diamonds. So I I think that we certainly can can see how diamonds would be of luxury um, due to their, sure. you know, rarity, such as size, color, and then uh, the cut that that's done on them. But like, also, it's truly incredible. When, like, I don't know if you've uh, you've gotten the chance or like had the time to just like look at a very like finely cut diamond. They really are um, pretty like like extravagant like how the color mm. goes through and and it just builds like a world that looks like 
the stars, but if you were on drugs looking at the stars in the galaxy, like it just it looks it looks really cool. I'll, I'll admit it. But you know, I was curious. So why are diamonds even you know used for wedding rings? And, yeah. and it, it's it's pretty funny. Uh, it they weren't actually used for the most part uh, up until the 1930s. Uh, before that, it was normally just bands, like uh, like metal bands, and oh, that that's that's been the, the the standard since the Roman times. For example, uh, during the Roman times, it it was seen in custom that uh, the woman would wear a gold band uh, to signify marriage uh, while she was outside of the household, and then she would wear uh, a less uh, desirable metal such as iron while she was inside the house uh, doing um, work, and. The, the real reason why we have diamonds today in wedding rings is because of a marketing and advertisement campaign in the 1930s. And it was, uh, it was by a French company called, uh, Uber. uh, and you know, yes, they coined, say, uh, they say, ca- say that again. Duber. Duber. Okay. Gotcha. Yes. Uh, and, and I hope I'm not, uh, I hope I'm not getting crucified for my French accent. I'm trying my best here, but, um, <laughs> <laughs> but it was it was pretty interesting because uh this is where we get the, the slogan diamonds are forever is uh this this oh. company this french company that that was having a huge advertising campaign to to get this uh tradition instilled in the culture yeah well uh, diamond, i mean that's like the main hook in the song uh uh di- diamonds blood diamonds so that i did that mm-hmm. that talk about a Talk about a circle, uh, a, com- a comeback. Yeah. Or sorry, not comeback, throwback. Oh, that's that's a. Uh, so it just it, it essentially came about from a marketing ad. Mm-hmm. Okay. Wow, I I didn't know it was that, I didn't know it was that recent. I mean, same. It's it's crazy when you think about that because that was like maybe our great grandparents you know it's like, yeah it's, that's i mean less than 100 years ago i mean i mean i know it sounds like a long time a, ago but and keep in mind like this is just uh like the popularization of it like there were certainly people that were like diamonds are expensive and they will definitely look good on a wedding ring sure so let's put it on there but this was like the um kind of the the big step towards this tradition and culture mm-hmm. and you know of course with that uh Diamonds, you know, and of this, and of them, the, wow, I can't speak today. In of themselves, are uh, pretty incredible. Uh, you know, chemically, you know, everyone knows. Well, most folks know that they're they're hard, they're super difficult to to break, low friction, and they're able to uh, withstand uh, electric electrical pulses uh, to extremely high level. Uh, mm. And so. Um, you know, just all that aside. That's, a good, that's an interesting point, actually. Uh, like the the etri- electrical aspect of because you to to the public, like just knowing that a diamond is is very resistant to electrical sensitivity, or it's very high to electrical sensitivity, and it uh, has a very high thermal conductivity. Mm-hmm. Like that doesn't that doesn't really like seem like it matters, but like crystals are uh, like quartz in particular crystals are very uh, important to yeah. to electronics modern day electronics so like uh, i know that uh, you're you're probably familiar with uh, the the time crystals within electronics where they sync up mm-hmm. the instructions for the cpu the central processing unit and so like these crystals are essential to to keeping the timing and the operating systems and hardware uh, to function so yeah and, and then like Right, and then we mentioned you know construction too uh, and drilling, but all of those diamonds that that I think you know I know we touched on it earlier, but all of those diamonds are those aren't uh, pure uh, necessarily. They're they're cheaper, mm-hmm. but I, I think it, I think that I think that drives home the the, the fact that diamonds and I, you I think you you know a little bit more about this, but diamonds are not necessarily this um, uh ex- extremely rare and scarce resource like uh, uranium or something like that yeah. uh there's a huge monopoly on this market though that's what drives up the cost of like jewelry for instance um and mm-hmm. do you want to and, and i know you did some research on this do you do you want to uh cover yeah that? i can touch on this cool 
I'll start with a uh, diamond. So, so here's something that like, when I learned about this, I was like, man, this is where we are as a society. We are, we are like basically gatekeeping diamonds. So um, as you probably know, diamonds are, are from ca uh, carbon and uh, pressure and all these type of uh, properties create diamonds in the ground. But we actually, um, due to technology and innovation, we are actually able to um, to create diamonds and and factories and machines. Um, we can create them. We we typically do that for the applications we mentioned, such as like mining and uh, other things. But what really um, kind of threw me off guard is that because we can make them, uh, kind of in a screen sense we we think of the manufactured diamonds as less because they were not found in the ground they were not natural and so we have this kind of uh of shift to to even uh putting the natural diamonds on a pedestal as opposed to the manufactured diamonds which you know kind of makes sense um but also it it doesn't at a market scale because there is a term uh, that's coined for diamonds that are like, very natural and it's uh, it's VVS. And so I, I, even a lot of rappers uh, popularize like VVS stone, VVS diamonds, like all VVS on my chain. And that stands for very, very slight. And the very, very slight is whenever you look um, like at the diamond with a microscope or uh, with any type of enlarging imaging uh, device, you can see that there's some some very very small holes or uh, airs within the diamond, which you know signify that it's from the ground because you know mm -hmm. it, it's not exactly perfect like a manufactured diamond. And that that really threw me off. Is like, man, we have this resource that we're like literally having children used <laughs> as slaves to mine yeah. for, it, and we can just make it in a a factory like. I, I, and and yeah. and they're even like less valuable and desirable if we if we do it by manufacturing processes be, just because they they're they're less they're less um they're, they're more perfect and they're less air prone like that that was kind of confusing to me um at a, a market scale you know well yeah and that you know I don't want to sound like a hypocrite because I know I, I benefit in the first world from products that are manufactured in poor countries. Right. I'm, I'm not going to sugarcoat that. I mean, my, mm -hmm. my, my, like probably some clothes I wear and some, <laughs> just some basics are probably the, you know, this, this cup I have, you know, are manufactured in Vietnam and China. Uh, but mm -hmm. it's just, it just, it can, it, it's irritating to, to imagine that something that can be reproduced by us without having to extract them th uh, through any means, uh, how that, how that even computes. Right. So it's, yeah. so if it's, it's hard to put your head around until I think you, you, you stop and, and actually examine the problem, which it sounds like that you, 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 that's what you discovered. Um, it's just, frustrating <laughs> to, to, to for Absolutely. lack of a better word yeah and um, you know what makes it worse is uh they touched on this in the movie but they they have storage uh not not don't think of storage facilities as in like you know uh your 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 monthly storage that you'll pay for but but actual underground bunkers that are full of these diamonds where they catalog them categorize them and keep them for the future they actually uh, kind of create a uh, mini monopoly uh, with, with diamonds where they control uh, both their production, the storage, and because of that, they also have the market access and pricing power that's necessary to drive up these prices, which I, I never thought about. I always thought like, man, diamonds are so rare. Like we, like you, yeah. when you, whenever you go to a diamond store, like you got to buy that thing or else you're not going to see it probably again. But then whenever I was shown in the movie kind of the producer side where they actually can store them and they, they can just hold them indefinitely. Right. Like, that was, that was crazy to me. I never knew about that. Yeah. And it, it just, it's, it's scummy in the worst way possible. Uh, it, mm -hmm. it, it wouldn't be that bad. Uh, it almost wouldn't be that bad if it was produced in a more ethical means that we're used to in this country, where, you know, in mining areas where there's higher yep. work standards and, you know, adults, 
actually do the work. <laughs> um, uh, but, you know, knowing what we know about, um, uh, you know, blood diamonds uh, and just jewels, I believe, not just diamonds, but um, mm-hmm. it's, it's really hard to justify buying uh, from a source that you don't know where it came from in a jewelry store, in my opinion. And of course, that's just my opinion. I mean, other people may have a more educated uh, understanding of where they get their diamonds from, but you know, it it, it you know you, it doesn't sit right with you when you walk by a jewelry store anymore, does it? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, man, everything in there, every piece, every jewel, that's got a history that yeah. I, I, I unfortunately think is not going to be a happy ending. No, not at all. Um, so on that happy note uh do you, you want to do it you want to take a breather just for a minute and uh yeah let's, let's hit a commercial break yeah let's do it you all get right. to choose which one we're, we're gonna go with all right so I, I have a list here and keep in mind uh i think we we mentioned last time we're gonna try to uh have a little breather uh just for just for kicks and giggles uh uh every podcast so all right, I have three different ones here, uh, and I don't think I, I certainly didn't take a peek. I promise at the ones you had. So we should be. I hope good. not. No, nah, no. Nah. So we should be good to go. Okay. So um, how about we do words I wish I didn't know? How does that sound? That sounds good. Uh, do All you right. want to start, or would you like me to start? Oh, uh, you know what? I'll let I'll let you start. I'm curious what you have. All right. All right. I'll hit you with it. So. <clears throat> words i wish i didn't know flummoxed guess what guess what flummoxed means and you can ask for be spelled or used in a sentence that sounds like a pokemon <laughs> <laughs> go flummox flummox use uh, uh flummox use def- uh, defense curl anyway <laughs> um it sounds like um well it sounds like they're up. You're uh, flustered, or something. Is it? Is that? Is that close? That is close, actually. Um, uh, yeah. Kind of close, not exactly. Uh, okay. I'll, I'll use it in a sentence just to help you a little bit more. Okay. And whenever I was looking at this, uh, whenever I was looking at this coat, I was flummoxed about how it was made. Appalled, like shocked. Let me go ahead and tell you. Okay. Flummox means that you are completely confused. Oh, that's just that's just me in general when looking at code. Okay, <laughs> um. that's like that's like whenever you, <laughs> it's like whenever you you get to a point where I don't know what I don't know. Like no, that's, that's pretty much it. Is 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 basically the embodiment of this idea. Okay. 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 Cool. Uh, I mean, so what 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 about that word makes you? Or it makes you wish you didn't know it because i flustered you mentioned both both sides of the word the stems like so fla like makes me think of fluster and then like the x at the end makes me think like perplex right and i i really uh i really dislike whenever people say these very specific words that that mean a certain type of like anger or um upset or emotion Mm -hmm. because you know i to be honest i generally just want people to to be happy and content and whenever i I find out or i hear like new words like this where it's like it's a it's a word that's just stressful and and could make and and could be someone in an anxious or stressful state uh i i don't like it i'm gonna be honest yeah just uh just a personal opinion and you know i i think that it sounds it just sounds like an older like an old school word so you don't want to sound like mm-hmm. you're all like uh you know pretentious uh yeah yeah pretentious exactly which i think is the one of the words that i said i didn't wish yeah, i knew yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh and uh anyway uh no that's a good point like oh well i am positively flummoxed like can you imagine like someone actually saying that irl i'm like eh, i don't know about that <laughs> um, i don't know about that chief i don't know about that so uh now this word's pretty basic. Everyone knows this word that I have. Um, I think it's kind of on the same uh, wavelength as uh, last time. It's just a word that's so overused, and it's just something I just it, it, I just can't stand. 
Um, oh uh, literally. Wait, wait, can I guess? Oh, uh, I was going to guess literally. I were, you, were you really? Literally. Yes. I was going to oh, say yeah. literally or the other one would be like. <sighs> yeah, well, to, to be fair, like is a huge, like, uh, variation. So it's not quite as bad, I guess. Just depends, right, on the context. But literally has just lost its essence oh. in, in our generation. Like, oh, uh, not, yeah. not that, like, the past generation's, like, completely fulfilled it by any means. But it's just, like, I, I I will just generally, like, text someone and be like, I literally died from this. But, yeah, like, like, no, I, it's not I, at all. I literally am going to pass out from this heat. It's so hot today. Literally. <laughs> it's like, oh, stop. Yeah. And, I, and I'm guilty of it, too, 100%. I, I say the, that word way too much, just unconsciously, I think, uh, or subconsciously um it's just it's so uh yeah it's it's almost as you like you're using the word the it's just it's it's that's how often that word is used and it doesn't it doesn't mean anything anymore I'm like ah it's <laughs> overused to the point where it's useless like right it, like i actually you know funny enough um i got a story about this uh so i i tried out a bunch of different sports in high school like you know i tried out golf was yeah. absolutely terrible at it. Um, I played soccer, and uh, I did swimming. I did track, and I also played tennis because you know, at, as part of a curriculum, you're required to play a certain amount of sports to get the credits and mm -hmm. in turn get the diploma, the high mm -hmm. school diploma. And so, I played tennis, seen junior junior year, I, I believe it was junior year. Um, but I play tennis and, uh, I, I, I actually kind of enjoy tennis. I'm not gonna lie. It was pretty fun. I wasn't good at it, but it was fun. Yeah. Um, and one time we, you know, we were doing practice and, uh, I was with, um, a friend and we were playing doubles against, uh, two girls. And on the other team, there was this girl that was new to the school mm -hmm. and, um, she was like, she was like super athletic. Like she was like. She was like a a female LeBron James, not not you know not not the same uh, frame by any means, but like like the way <laughs> that like six <laughs> it's like six nine and just like broad shoulders and <laughs> dude, she was tall though, like she was uh -huh. she was tall. I'm not gonna lie, like I I, I think she would have done so good in volleyball if she pursued that instead of tennis. But anyways, so she had said some some like uh some funny things, uh, hand quotes, uh. And I, to be honest, I didn't want to hit her, like, with the, the tennis ball. It, like, I certainly didn't want to, like, hurt her or harm her. But, like, I was trying to hit the ball as hard as I could across the other side so that, like, we could get a point. Yeah. And um, and so I was serving. And I threw the ball up. And I swung with everything I had. Yeah. And yeah. I missed. Ooh. and okay. um in the process of that i actually dislocated my shoulder that's how hard i tried hitting it and the, the way I, I i threw my arms so up to, to like did you try to throw it like like that or was it a, like a backhand i threw it up and then it was across like this way so you were serving you were serving because i was yes i was serving okay that. and um and, and so, and, and keep in mind, this, this story does relate to literally, You'll, we'll, we'll get there in a second. And so I, I like silently walked off the court because I, I, you can immediately feel whenever something is messed up. And so uh, I immediately walked off the court and I was holding my arm uh, going to the bathroom. And I remember taking off my shirt. I couldn't even lift my arm because it, you know, it was dislocated down below and I couldn't move my arm to take off my shirt. So I like took it off with just one arm. And as I was oh. taking it, I was like, oh my gosh my socket is not where it's supposed to be and i start freaking out and i tried to like i i don't know if i damaged anything um the doctor didn't say but i tried like pushing it in or something like it was not it was a bad situation it was terrible yeah and uh it hurt a lot and so i let the the coach the coach found out uh because some people came to, to see me in the bathroom and they're like oh my gosh and so they got the coach and the coach uh, talked to the tennis staff there, and they they got one of the staff members at the the court to drive me to an emergency hospital. 
And before uh, before that happened, they were trying to figure out, you know, do I have insurance? Do I have what I need whenever I get there? Like, where's my uh, wallet and whatnot? And so um, I called my dad just to make sure, like, hey, I can, I can, you know, go and I'll be insured and covered and I won't be a big deal, right? So I, I call him and I'm talking to him and I'm telling him, like, like dad, please, like, I, I, I got to go to this emergency hospital. I screwed up. Um, I dislocated my shoulder. It's literally out yeah. of the socket uh, and I'm in so much pain. I, I, I need, like, I need to be at a hospital. It, it's literally, it, it felt, I told him like, it literally felt like there were surgical needles like being stabbed every like second into where it's supposed to be. And my dad and my dad, you know, he, he was, you know, thinking, all right, let, let me just see if we can get an appointment. I don't think you really need to go to a, a hospital it, um we'll, we'll get an appointment real quick we'll see if i can talk to my uh, private doctor and and schedule something later today maybe tomorrow and, and i'm telling <laughs> and i almost am like yelling at him on the phone my shoulder is literally dislocated <laughs> trying to tell him. i was about to say tomorrow just sleep it off <laughs> yeah it was it was a bad situation man but, uh, Oh, and um, uh, that was the first time I tried morphine. I, I got morphine uh, to help with the pain. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a, a drug user by any means, but let me tell you, getting morphine, it felt like an air conditioner was going through my blood vessels. Like, it was a crazy <laughs> feeling. I'm, like, I'm... I don't know how to explain it. It literally felt like blue liquid was I, – I could feel it going through my blood vessels throughout my body, like from, yeah. from where they had it in the IV – and my vein all the way to like capillaries on my chest. Like I, I felt like I could trace it as like a, a blue liquid that was like air conditioner going through me. It was crazy. Um, wow. But definitely not worth uh, dislocating my shoulder to try. That freaking sucked. Uh, literally. Um, <laughs> literally. <laughs> um, man, I, I've never dislocated my shoulder. Uh, I've broken uh, a finger. <laughs> but that's way different. Uh Oh man, that had to be so painful. And I also, I've never had morphine. I, I, I can imagine though. I, my, I think my folks had morphine at one point. They like hurt themselves. I don't know. I don't remember what, but I've heard that stuff is good though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm man. not going to recommend it. I'm not a doctor, but but um, it was right. an experience. I will say that much. Man, well, that's an exciting. That's an exciting twist on that. That's way better than what I had. <laughs> as far as like stories go but cool well um there, is there anything else you wanted to touch on the uh, as far as the the diamond industry let me think you know i i do have to say one thing i wanted to touch on that you know, i'm not entirely clear or knowledgeable about but i thought that it would be interesting to discuss and maybe uh you might have a, a better as you are just a little bit older than me um the advent of engagement rings like are, are you familiar with this concept of like the engagement ring, then the diamond ring? Like that's so something usually, that I never realized until I was in college. So, I mean, it depends on the person and it's not like I have a lot of experience. I've never been engaged before. Uh, but um, <laughs> the, the engagement ring is usually pretty fancy um, from what I've seen. And then they kind of dial it down with the actual wedding, wedding ring. Um, and, and you know, if it's a, if it's a dude, it's a little different normally, but um yeah you know for for the for the girl like if we're talking about a man and a woman obviously um usually like the engagement ring is pretty fancy um mm -hmm. you know when they're proposing uh but for the wedding ring it's i've seen people that nowadays have like just rubber rubber or metal bands uh for the guys yeah those are becoming popular for workers yeah yeah no i, I see that a lot now uh, even i see some women wearing that too um it's just easier i don't blame them i mean that's not really the yeah not really the focus right is the, the not the jewelry it's the actual people involved so i, I can't blame them for the, going the symbol right yeah exactly so i can't blame them for for going that route but yeah to answer your question it seems like engagement rings can get really fancy um uh if it's the, the girl so um interesting but yeah, from 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 what from all the experience I have, and well, I, I've proposed like a hundred <laughs> different times, but uh, oh uh, goodness, yeah, 
no but um, i gotta tell you there's actually uh there's actually a cool uh kind of relationship between the engagement and weathering that i don't know if it's popular but um i was told about it so like whenever you get an engagement ring what you can do uh with the with engagement ring if you hold on to it is after you get the wedding ring you can like you can combine the engagement ring and the wedding ring. So it's like you're leveling up the ring. So you like, uh, I, I believe they solder it together or something like that, but they, they get yeah. it to be a combined one piece. And I was like, what? <laughs> Actually, I don't think I've heard of that before. That's pretty cool. I guess. If it's yeah, not expensive. It, it looks cool. Um, huh. So like it's a, yeah, it's like a, <laughs> I don't know why I keep bringing up Pokemon, but it's like a Pokemon evolution. <laughs> exactly that's what yeah. i thought about when i first served yeah that's cool um but one more subject i wanted to talk about uh before we go into uh another commercial break and then the financial lesson is the idea of a utopia and paradise now the kid mentioned uh to his father while they were walking back at the very beginning of the film that one day this place will be a paradise it will be a utopia for all and mm -hmm. I, you know, I thought that that was such a beautiful uh, relationship, especially that moment in particular, the father and son walking home together and where where he talks about like my son walks and, and uh, I think it was like five to 10 kilometers a day just to go to school. And he and he believes that that there is a utopia paradise that in this land that that will happen one day. My son is smart and he believes and he is good. Like I thought. Mm -hmm. I thought that was a very beautiful moment in the, the film. And I thought we should talk a little bit about, you know, the idea of like the paradise that that could be. Well, um, I don't, I, you know, obviously everyone has thought about the idea of uh, utopia. Right. And, and it seems like to be, it seems to be like with each new generation that comes up, like they have the ideal, you know, idea of what, uh, a paradise or a utopia depends on who you ask should be um i think we you know the very was it the first podcast it was it the last podcast uh, where we talked about you know how the boomers had this vision uh, the generation had this gen uh idea of what should be right um and what mm -hmm. should be the right way to move forward with ultimately achieving peace and love and all that um yep the problem is no matter how much people have an idealized world and maybe if the community is small enough, you can achieve that for a little while. But the problem is like human nature, we're like innately selfish people. And it's, it's hard for me to imagine a world where we're truly um, united. Um, it's, it's hard for me to picture that um, long-term, you know, uh, but that's yep. just, that's just my take on it. Who knows? Maybe, maybe people will, like all be in sync and we'll all be perfectly happy with each other. But I, I it's hard for me to imagine that. Um, but. Yeah, it's certainly a, a wonderful idea. Uh, and, you know, whenever I was in school uh, during, during the time, whenever we were reading uh, Animal Farm, which is also by, uh, it's by George Orwell, uh, yeah. who, who wrote 1984. Um, we, you know, my teacher, every class would, would start out with saying a utopia does not exist and it's impossible. And yeah, I agree. <laughs> being that drilled into me, it, it was sad. It, like, I, like, I know it's like the reality, but it, it was, it was, it was sad to, to know that this wonderful idea could not be executed because of how we are. And it's just a symptom of, of humans being alive. It doesn't matter who you are as a person, right? Uh, mm -hmm. We, uh, I like to think that you know, uh, you and I are are a pretty are pretty good people. We try to be open minded about the world around us, but you know, certainly personally, I I still find myself when I'm out in the real world. Uh, doesn't matter the gym, the grocery store, work. Um, you, I can't help but try to compare myself to others and see where I stack up. And I like to think that's mm -hmm. pretty normal with everybody. I hope so. <laughs> um, the problem is, though, that can spill over if you're having a bad day or something has, uh, negative has happened in your life. 
And when that does spill over, that sometimes can lead to aggression, lead to people butting heads um, and, and at, yeah. at the worst, you know, leading to violence. And so I think innately within us, we, we try to compare ourselves to others. And even when we want to be, to have peace and, and, you know, in a society. So I, I think it's just this internal conflict we have that it, it's, it, it, that leads to, I think your point that it's, I don't know if we could ever really achieve uh, a utopia just because we, uh, we, I think innately don't have a utopia in here. You know what I'm trying to say? Mm-hmm. I get what you're saying. And, you know, it's a, it's a sad truth, but uh, we can certainly, and it, and it, it shouldn't discourage us though is from getting as close as we can. I think that's, I think that's uh, sure, a part sure. that's important because a lot of people just like think about it and they're like, well, this is the way it is. It's how it's going to be, but it, it doesn't mean that we can't strive to get as close as possible with, you know, the, the resources and time that we have. Oh, a hundred percent. I, I, I'm, I'm with you on that. Um, yeah, there, there, you certainly always want to improve, right? So it's a good mm-hmm. point. Yeah, you, it, maybe you can't achieve like perfection, but you can get close if you try. <laughs> yeah, I agree. Yeah. Ready to cut to a commercial break? Yeah, let's go for it. All right, well, I'll, I'll let right. you start off this time. What, what do you got for me? Yes, sir. So we're going to go ahead with the are you smarter than a sixth grader question. Ah. Uh, Okay, yeah. So uh, I'll go ahead and start. Can you tell me the name of the largest city in the world? And uh, I know, I know you, you're kind of a geographical expert. You, you've, you know every inch of the map. Uh, oh, yeah, but every I can inch. give you some, I, I can give you uh, the multiple choice version, or you could just guess. But um, no, no shame in asking for the multiple choice you know what? I'm such I'm such an expert that I'm always open to uh, checking the the facts, no no matter what. <laughs> so can, can you give me the multiple choice? All right, all right. Yeah. Yes, sir. So we have New York, Paris, okay. Tokyo, Los Angeles, Washington D.C. And that's, that's what, what you're picking. That that's oh. what that's what we oh. got. Oh man, that's easy. Tokyo, right? I hope. Dang, you're right. <laughs> Tokyo. No, that's man. Uh, yeah, Tokyo, no, that's, Japan. Man, shoot. <laughs> okay, that was that was. It. So I was thinking, like, oh, what happens if it's like a metro area? Like, is it like what do you define it as? Because you know they do that too. But it's like Brazil. Oh, uh, true. But no, yep. it, yeah. I was thinking New York just for a split second, but I'm like, yeah. I don't think so. People are moving out of there anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a, there's a, a, a lot of people moving. And let me tell you, I, I think it's, uh, it's interesting, you know, New York, like with the rats there, uh, there, there seems to be like a direct relationship to the amount of people and to the rat population. And I'm curious, you know, what's gonna happen with a, a lot of people moving and especially with the travel being uh, less than and ex- expected year to year uh, because of COVID and then now Omicron. I don't know what's going on with that rat population, but it'd be interesting yeah. to find out in coming years. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, make sure to check back into the rat to see how they're doing if I ever go back up there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Tell him I said hi, you know. No, oh, absolutely. I'll say I'll say hi to Gerald for you. Um, <laughs> all right. So, man, I, I almost feel bad because this one's, I, I think, a little tougher. Um, Uh-oh. All right. I'll hit you with it, though. All right. How many sides does a trapezium have? A trapezium? A tra- yeah, not a trapezoid. A uh, trapezium. Trapezium. Yeah, trapezium. It sounds like a, a shape that you made up. Like the the freaking um, the the hexa deca flip. Like, <laughs> hexa, uh, hexa th- there's this deca. really yeah, it's like the hexa deca uh something hexa deca toyed or something like that. Some crazy looking shape. Yeah. Okay, so repeat the name of it one more time, and I'm I'm a I'm a guess. All right, trap trapezium. Trapezium. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna say. I'm just going to say seven, seven sides. <laughs> it's four. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah, it's it's a it's like a quadrilateral. So it's like it's it's shaped kind of like this. Mm-hmm. So um, Oh, is it like a rhombus? Yeah. Yeah, it's like a I think it's like a rhombus. I, I probably knew that then. It's just a I, I actually don't name. I'm going to look stupid. I'm going to sound stupid if I don't know if it's a rhombus. I, I don't remember, but I know it's a quadrilateral at the very least. Jeez, um, they are they are pillaging your your math in the comments. <laughs> I know they probably will. If uh, hey, who knows? Maybe they'll just. I mean, dislikes. We don't have dislikes anymore, so maybe I'll just. They'll, hey, they'll, there you go. <laughs> that's funny. Um, yeah, no, that's. I mean, I, I feel bad now because I that one was harder. I think so. No, it's okay. It's okay. Uh, next <laughs> time, uh, just expect something a little bit easier. Solid. All right. I'm gonna make it definitely three times harder now. <laughs> I was don't don't expect easier. <laughs> I was about to say, like, no, nah, you aren't. You aren't gonna make it easier. <laughs> um, so uh, let's let's get into our new portion uh, of a new segment of the show, and uh, that, it's it's a little bit of a financial advice, but we by no means are encouraging you to do any of the things we are saying. Right. Uh, but it's just you know a little bit of advice, but it's not advice. Please do not take any of our suggestions or encourage ideas. Right. But uh, this week, we're going to be talking about uh, money, as you might have guessed, and inflation. So with the, the new infrastructure bill being passed, trillion dollars, lots of money. Uh, and then also with uh, the supply chain problems we're having, a, a lot of inflation is occurring. Uh, for example, like uh, shipping costs have gone through the roof. Uh, Typically, it would have costed, you know, five to 10 grand uh, to, to ship a container uh, across, you know, the globe. It's looking at about starting rates, 25 grand. Uh, so a, there's a lot of inflation going on. And, um, you know, they, this was mentioned uh, during Thanksgiving specifically because, you know, a lot of people realize like, hey, this meal is going to cost a lot more than it did last year. And uh, with inflation, it, it's kind of... It's kind of sad because we're not seeing necessarily an increase of wages uh, across the board. Um, we are seeing an increase of inflation that's unexpected. And so, you know, mm-hmm. how do you how do you kind of hedge against that? How do you uh, protect your money? Because each year your, your money is, is worth less and less because of time decay. Right. Mm-hmm. And so uh, the starting point is investing. Surprise. Uh, yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> so um with that being said uh i was just going to go through you know a couple of ideas about how people invest and uh their typical outcomes and so uh the, the first way that that uh people invest and it's it's not like a, an investment that you would think about it's more of like a, a long-term um a long-term storage but uh savings accounts so mm-hmm. savings accounts uh average annual return zero percent now uh real estate is a path that a lot of people tend to take um bonds or real estate and the average annual return on that is three percent this this is this is where it gets to be looking like a worthwhile a worthwhile um actual investment is the the stock market Mm -hmm. the average annual return on the stock market is 9.8 percent just across and that's the board just, uh, across the board that's uh just you know the s p 500 a serum poor a serum poor largest 500 companies in the u.s uh index stock and then you know you also have the nasdaq and then you also have uh the dow uh, which is you know a group of the 30 largest uh, manufacturing uh companies in America. And so across the board, you know, they typically have the average annual return of 9.8%. Now, um, if you if you take that, and then you think about beating the market, which is uh, where you don't necessarily invest in index stocks, which uh, index stocks, uh, for, for people that um, may not know, uh, they reflect the market as a whole. So they're composed of a bunch of different stocks together. For example, um, Apple, uh, the NASDAQ usually, uh, tends to represent more tech oriented businesses while um the s p 500 represents a very diverse uh, portion of the uh, economy and market and the dow uh is supposed to represent uh you know most of america 
and uh, because because of the manufacturing aspect of it. And um, when you beat the market, you are uh, you are not investing necessarily in index stocks. You're investing in uh, companies that believe and that that might be like within the index stocks, but you're not investing directly into the index stocks. Um, so index stocks are composed of a group of assets and uh, and you're you're investing in this this sector of the mm-hmm. economy through the index stocks. And so beating the market, uh, average annual return is 20%. Right. Which, you know, if, if you think about com- yeah. compound interest, uh, that that's good. That, that's I'd what say we so. Want. Yeah. <laughs> and so I guess uh, our, our advice uh, per se is, you know, if you don't, if you don't want to watch your money become less and less each year, just put it in some index stocks and, uh, and, and let it grow with the market because uh, that will hedge your, your money from inflation and hedge uh, in this sense means uh, protect or like build a, a moat around. Uh, you, you can think of the uh, investing in, in the stock market as almost uh, a, a defensive measure while um, a defensive measure against inflation while also an offensive measure um, with the value in, in inside of it. So um, certainly, certainly saving your money uh, is, is useful. Uh, things can go wrong in the stock market. I mean, take for example, mm-hmm. the great depression beginning of COVID, but uh, on average and in uh, typical years, uh, even, even, uh, during COVID, um, by the end of the year, you know, it was, it was plus side that most right. index stocks across the board, uh, maybe not as much as the average annual return in the previous years, but certainly a good return. And so mm-hmm. in order to, to fight inflation, uh, cause inflation is going to happen, whether we like it or not, uh, even, even the feds like kind of plan for inflation. And whenever we have this hyperinflation, that's, uh, coming, in the future with all the money being spent uh, or just the unexpected inflation right now, um, it's important to to keep your money safe because you're never going to know when you need that capital. And so hedging it with uh, an investment index stocks is a, a good first step, I would say. And that's great advice. Yeah. It's so, it's so disheartening. I think to look at your, in the inflation rates and look at your cash that you have, like, you know, checking your savings account and just you, you when you realize, Oh wait, let's say you have a thousand dollars in there a thousand mm-hmm. last year is essentially worth six hundred dollars now or uh sorry i'm sorry um is worth uh 940 i believe now nine four yeah so you know just just by doing nothing um so it's that's a great that's a great that's great advice just and the problem is i think uh, a lot of people run into with investing in index funds or investing with a long-term goal in mind is patience, uh, especially mm-hmm. when they do see a dip because it's always tough to watch your, uh, to watch red <laughs> in your, yeah, no, uh, I, I, those red candles, they, they can hurt, but, but you know, you gotta, you gotta think long-term and you gotta trust the, trust the system. And in this case, the system is the market and, I believe in uh, I, I believe in, in the U.S.'s ability to compete and to continue to create amazing products that are globalized. And you know, I I certainly think that it's important to protect your money. Because take for example, let, let, let's let's put this into perspective. Your your entry iPhone is a thousand dollars. Yeah, that's that's an investment in itself right there. And you need to protect, uh, it's only going to go up. Cause I mean, take, for example, we, we're having a chip shortage right now. And, you know, to, to bring this full circle, uh, the computers that we're using right now and uh, the phones that we carry with us each day, all the, the lithium for the, the battery cells, all the electronics, the copper, the solder, the circuitry, they had to be mined. They had to come from somewhere, mm-hmm. and uh, that those uh, those metals and uh, and the diverse uses uh, they, they're they're going to become increasingly expensive. Mm-hmm. Definitely, hundred percent. 
So yeah, that's, that's great points, man. Um, yeah, I definitely, you know, uh, at, just as a personal opinion, not as investment advice, I would say, uh, you know, start researching and getting up to speed on how the, the market's doing in general. Um, cause mm-hmm. you will most likely have a much better luck investing in long-term in, uh, in the market than you will just letting your money sit in a, in an account somewhere. So in a checking account or savings Absolutely. account. So, and so, uh, some of the figures I referred to in this like little, uh, mini lecture or like small Ted talk, um, they're, they're actually from a, a, an ebook, uh, a little booklet for people to learn and get financially literate in the stock market and accounting and financials. And so I'm going to link that in the description for you. And it's a uh, stock investing 101 by the young investors society, very down to earth, very authentic. Uh, there's no, no bribery trickery. It's just a, a free resource and, uh, it's just to, to help you learn. And Great. so, um, Awesome. We're gonna we're gonna provide that for y'all, and uh, we're going to um, continue to find ways to to help y'all improve your life with this uh, segment. Oh, that's great, man! Yeah, uh, yeah. L- listen to the to the to listen to that advice because uh, again, don't listen to the advice. But, uh, listen to the personal advice. Yes, yes. But, we, but as make a disclaimer, your own decision. We're... Yeah. <laughs> Um, we are, we are just uh, we are just people talking. You, please do not listen to anything we say. <laughs> a, a period. <laughs> uh, agreed. Um, but with that being said, um, do you want to close out uh, this podcast with the final food for thought commercial break, and then uh, speak about the homework for the next episode, and uh, and, and and you know let the audience enjoy their their next week full of great studies and material. Absolutely. Yeah, so uh, there, a really deep quote this week. Uh, <laughs> a food for thought this week is, you miss 100% of the shots you don't take. it. <laughs> I love that quote, though. <laughs> it's, it's so good. Okay, Who, who's that quote by? 100% of the shots you don't take. Uh, yes. So at first I thought it was Yogi Berra, uh, like the, the old, uh, like baseball player. Um, but I believe that oh, that'd be kind of cool. Oh, no, that'd be awesome. Uh, but I, I think it's, uh, the, the, the hockey player, uh, Wayne, yeah. Wayne Gretzky, I believe. Oh, okay. Okay. He's, he's still pretty cool. So yeah, no, but Yogi Berra always made like a bunch of quotes that sounded like they made a lot of sense. But mm-hmm. they, they sounded smart. But that one's actually a good one. I, I like that one. It's it's a it's a motivator. I like it. Interesting. Uh, I, so, so do do you want to know why I said or or why I reacted the way I did? <laughs> go, yeah, go for it. The Office, because Michael Scott uses that quote. Oh sure. Oh a hundred. Oh yeah. No. Um, and I, I should have thought of that one first. And as far as like, if people would know that one, uh, but I, my, my grandpa like used that quote all the time too. So like I get like two different memories. And so that's the first one I went to. Um, Interesting. So I wouldn't expect like that to be such an, an old like uh, saying, because I, with the, with the office, I felt like this generation just knew it like from that and that, and you know, no one really yeah. thought more of it. But wow, your grandfather. No, it has. Well, it has, yeah. Well, it's not super old. It's not like way, way back. But mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it's from a sports guy. So very nice. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So um, all right, all right. Let so me, let me let me tell you mine. Yeah, go for my, it. You know, my food for thought. Uh, it's kind of um, a little bit more engaging. Um, <laughs> but uh, my food for thought is about the top 25 most controversial songs of all time mm. and uh and and this is by uh a magazine that that works for parental advisory and uh, protecting kids so i thought this would be pretty interesting but uh one of the most controversial songs of all time is strange fruit by billy 1939 okay now it's it's one of those songs that 
you've probably heard, but you never really like realize. It's one of those songs where you hear, but you never know the name. Okay. But um, for for the listeners, uh, we're not able to play the song due to copyright issues. But uh, but certainly check it out. Hmm. I I I'll have to do that too because I haven't listened to it. Maybe I have heard it, but I'll I'll check it out. Um. For sure. Cool. Well, uh, all right. So for the for next week, um, the theme that I, that I came up with, where uh, to really bring in holiday spirit, is a uh, solid society <laughs> and censorship. Um, which I know sounds like a pretty broad topic, but we'll we'll take a deep dive into it next week. Um, there, are, so there's there's two media that I really want y'all to check out. Um, the first one is watching um, the documentary Social Dilemma. Uh, it's on Netflix and it came out last year and it takes a really in-depth and insider approach to uh, social media um, and how it influences our thinking uh, and our perspective on life. It's, it's it, it, the, the main, uh, the main person behind the, the documentary uh, is or was a, a Google engineer. I say was, cause I, I don't remember if he left the company, but um he interviews a lot of folks from silicon valley and it's uh it's anyway i'll I'll let y'all watch it but it's a it's a great documentary and finally i want y'all and i need to do some also um read read up and do your due diligence on uh the social credit system in the chinese government um Uh oh yeah that's it that's it we're we're, our podcast isn't gonna be able yeah we can't upload anymore yeah (laughs) Yeah. In, in, in china all right, yeah. sorry, sorry for any of our uh, listeners in China. Uh, I, I, I don't think they can watch YouTube in China anyway. So, <laughs> oh snap! <laughs> uh, I'm sure they have VPNs, but uh, yeah, I don't think Google's allowed over there. Um, I didn't even realize it was that censored. My goodness. Oh yeah, um, I, I think people use VPNs all the time, but they're officially not allowed. Well, this is a good them. topic, then. Yeah. So I I take I encourage y'all to read up on that because that we're going to touch on that, um, and uh, yeah. So th- those are the two big ones because I feel like that's a lot of material to 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 go over. And can I tack on one thing? Yeah, definitely. Uh, for our listeners, uh, we're, we're going to have all this stuff linked in the description as always for each week. But uh, just yep. so you know, uh, Ian mentioned uh, Netflix and the social dilemma. Um, actually. Netflix released this documentary on YouTube for free, the full uh, fledged documentary, oh. the documentary. Yeah. So uh, we'll link that for y'all oh. and, and it'll be available for everyone that has access to YouTube. Once again, sorry for anyone in China. So, sorry, China. No. Okay. I did not know that um, actually. So thank you for bringing that up. I didn't realize it was released for free. Awesome. Even better. <laughs> Absolutely. Cool. All right. Well, uh, do you want to close us, uh, start closing us out with the challenge of the week, Alex? Yes, sir. So right. this week, uh, you know, because Christmas is coming up and uh, it's not supposed to be about presents, but presents are certainly an, a very uh, kind and generous occasion mm-hmm. uh, or a, a form of showing appreciation to someone and, um, in, we, we are always uh, fast to, you know, get Christmas presents for our family and our friends that we, we really love and care about. But we don't really think about, you know, getting Christmas presents for people that don't like us or we or <laughs> that we don't like. And, yeah you know, it, it, it's because, you know, you, you don't want to spend money on them and you don't even want to think about what they like. Like, it's true. You don't want to get something for them. So the challenge of the week is to at least think about and then uh, get a Christmas present for someone that you normally wouldn't or even think to get the present idea. for. That, that is a challenge. <laughs> so <we'll, laughs> Very. So uh, that's a good idea. I like that. I like that a lot. Um, yeah. So uh, I guess to close us out, uh, as usual, you know, if you, if, you, if you feel like it, like, comment, and subscribe and all that good stuff. Um, and that everyone, thanks for tuning in, uh, and we will we will see you guys next week. And uh, keep it real. Keep it real. All right. See y'all. Thanks, everyone.